these may cause epidemics like cholera. They are called as genus Vibrio. They have certain general characteristic. They are comma shaped gram negative bacilli. They have active darting motility. Due to the presence of the polar flagella, they are non capsulated, they are non sporing, and the most important member is Vibrio cholerae. To understand the laboratory diagnosis of Vibrio, we must know the classifications of the Vibrio. There are two main classifications which are available of Vibrio that is, Heberg's classification and Gardner and Venkatraman classification. Under Heberg's classification, the basis is fermentation of manose, sucrose, and arabinose. It has been divided into eight groups from group 1 to group 8. Vibrio cholerae belongs to group 1. In India, Gardner and Venkatraman classification is followed. Vibrio is divided into two main groups that is group A and group B. Group A consists of biochemically similar and common H antigen. Group B consists of biochemically and antigenically heterogeneous antigens. Group B is not important. Group A consists of Vibrio cholerae. Based on O antigen, group A is divided into O subgroup 1 and O subgroup 2 to 139. V cholerae or Vibrio cholerae belongs to O subgroup 1. O subgroup 2 to 139 consists of non agglutinating vibrio. O subgroup 1 is divided into classical and L tor forms. Classical are non hemolytic, whereas L tor are hemolytic. Then classical has been further divided into Ogawa, Inaba, and Hikojima serotypes. Similarly, L tor has been divided into Ogawa, Inaba, and Hikojima serotypes. General characteristics of Vibrio cholerae. They were isolated by Robert Koch. They are comma shaped gram negative bacilli. They are arranged in parallel rows in smear, which give rise to a fish in a stream appearance. They have active darting motility they are aerobic non fastidious that is they can grow in ordinary media the growth is better at alkaline ph that is 8.4 to 8.6 which is used in preparing selective media for vibrio discussing the pathogenesis of cholera cholera or the vibrio cholerae the causative organism of cholera is a gram-negative bacilli. It has certain virulence factors. The most important is the motility. Then it has certain enzymes like mucinase. It has proteolytic enzymes which helps in crossing the mucus barrier, the pili attachment to the intestinal epithelial cells, and the cholera. Cholera toxin is an enterotoxin. It is protein in nature and heat labile that is it is destroyed by the heat it consists of two fragments a and b the fragment b helps in binding to the gm1 gangliocide receptors on the surface of the intestinal epithelial cells fragment a is active and it enters the cell it activates 
the cyclic AMP concentration in the cells since adenylate cyclase increases and it causes the hypersecretion of water and electrolytes into the lumen of the intestine which lead to the profuse watery diarrhea. Source of infection is water contaminated with Vibrio cholerae. Mode of transmission is by ingestion. The infective dose is about 10 to the power 5 to 10 to the power 8 bacilli. Cholera is a waterborne disease discussing the sequence of events. The sequence of the events starts with ingestion of the contaminated water. The water which is contaminated with Vibrio cholerae. It reaches the stomach. The bacteria reaches the stomach. Vibrios are highly sensitive to the gastric acidity. If the person has aches or rhydria and it is taken along with meal, some of the bacilli may escape. The bacilli which escape reach small intestine. They penetrate the mucous membrane. They attach to the epithelial cell surface. Vibrios do not invade the epithelial cells like diphtheria. They secrete toxin. The toxin enters the cell as discussed previously. As shown in the given figure, this is how the vibrio enter into the intestine and they cause profuse watery diarrhea. This leads to dehydration, shock, acidosis and death. Discussing the clinical features of Vibrio, the incubation period is as short as 24 to 48 hours or 4 to 5 days. Symptoms begin with sudden onset of nausea and vomiting and profuse watery diarrhea. No abdominal pain, cramps and discomforts are felt. Diarrhea is effortless and painless. The person may pass 10 to 30 liters of watery stools per day. Clinical features continued. The stool in the cholera is called as rice water stool which is a colorless fluid with flecks of mucus in it. If not treated, the water loss is pretty high. Discussing the laboratory diagnosis, the samples collected include the liquid stools through soft rubber catheter into the rectum collecting fluid and stool in a sterile container. Rectal swab may even be used. Transport media. This includes Venkat Raman Ramakrishnan medium and Kerry Blair medium. Under microscopy we shall discuss the unstained preparations which include hanging drop preparations as discussed in general microbiology that hanging drop preparations are used to test the motility of the organism. Here the active darting motility of the organism is seen under hanging drop preparations. Besides this there is an immobilization test using diagram microscopy. Here one drop of liquid stool is placed on a slide and observed in a diagram microscope for motility. If the darting motility is seen, one drop of specific antiserum is added. If motility is inhibited, after adding the antiserum, the test is positive. This is a rapid test for diagnosis of cholera. Culture for stool sample of Vibrio cholerae. It is done by two ways, direct plating and 
enrichment broth. Under direct plating, we have nutrient agar, McConkey's agar, blood agar, TCBS or thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar, Monsters gelatin, torocole, tellurite agar, and Richmond broth include alkaline peptone water at pH 8.6, which is heated at 37 degrees C for 4 to 6 hours. Then, hanging drop preparations, dilute carbon fusion is added, and subcultures is done by the same methods. Then, they all are incubated at 37 degrees C and identification of the suspected colonies is done. Discussing the characteristic of each agar. Nutrient agar in this translucent round colonies are formed with bluish tinge which are seen in transmitted light as seen in the given picture. In McConkey's agar, non-lactose fermenting colonies are produced. Under blood agar, round translucent colonies are produced. Hemolysis may be there or not. Under TCBS sucrose agar, The colonies are produced which are yellowish in color due to the fermentation of the sucrose. TCBS is a selective media. It suppresses other bacterial growth. Hence, it is very, very important. Monsters GTTA translucent colonies with black center and turbid halo around them because of reduction of telluride is produced and gelatin is also liquefied in monsters GTTA. There are two tests which helps in diagnosis of cholera. One is the string test in which colony emulsified with 0.5% sodium deoxycholate is taken. The suspension becomes mucoid and forms a string when a loop is drawn away from media. In the given photograph, we can see the formation of the string when loop is withdrawn away from the media. There's another test which helps in diagnosis of Vibrio cholerae that is called as cholera red reaction. A four day old culture of Vibrio cholera in peptone water is taken. A few drops of concentrated sulfuric acid is added to it. The formation of nitrosoindole gives a reddish pink color, which tells that the test is positive. This reaction is called as cholera red reaction. Thank you.